my name's Tanya. I'm going into my fourth year of medicine at Imperial. Um, and I'm also the new welfare chair on the student union. Um, and I'm Ben. So I'm the current student union president for the Medic Student Union. Um, and I'm just coming to the end of my year. So in literally two weeks time, we'll be handing over to the next president who you will meet in about half an hour. Um, and he'll come on to chat about next year and he, he will be the face that you'll you'll see when you come to Imperial. Yeah. Um, if you do have any questions, I think feel free to put them in the little chat thing down the bottom. Because um, we, we can see them. So yeah, if you've got any questions just as we're going along. Hi, Haroop. Um, nice to see you. Thanks for saying hi. Um, yeah, if anyone else has got any questions, please feel free to just stick them in the chat and we'll, um, and we'll, we'll try and answer them as quick as possible. Will this live be saved? Um, yes, it will. <laughs> there you go. First question answered. Wicked. Um, yeah. So what have you been up to, Tanya, over your, since you finished third year? Um, so I finished third year at the end of May. And then I found myself thinking, okay, I've got a really long summer. Maybe the last summer I'll have left. Um, so I wasn't really sure what to do. So I've just been pottering around, doing some gardening. Um, I'm hoping to go away with some friends soon, depending on how safe it is. But that's really it. What about you, Ben? How very middle-aged of you. Um, <laughs> pretty much the same. I did some gardening as well. Sorry, I shouldn't take the mickey. <laughs> I did some gardening as well. Um, and yeah, just work. I mean, like work's still going on for us. So yeah, I know. So you, two weeks and then you'll be free. So exactly. To not go on holiday and just spend the time, I don't know, watching TV. I don't know what I'm going to fill my life with now. It's going to be awful. <laughs> um, we've got some questions coming in already. Do you want to start? Should we start um, yeah. answering? Someone uh, said about saving. But like, yeah, we, we will. It will definitely be saved. It'll go on the, the medicine um, the thingy. And what is this about? This is about admission. Um, so this is about admissions for medical school. Uh, so if you've just got any questions about coming to Imperial to study medicine, then just feel free to stick them in the chat. All right. So shall we start with the first one, um, which is how often do you have assessments and exams? So, I mean, that's quite a hard question. I think every Heavy. year, every year it varies. Um, and obviously you guys will be coming into a completely new curriculum. So uh, one year's already been through that. Um, but for example, first years is a lot more integrated so it's not very much like you'll have assessments at the end you'll have them throughout your whole year whereas um for example third year you'll have your exams at the end i'm not really sure how to answer this i mean fourth year is great because we don't even have exams we just have coursework <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean do you have anything to add ben no not really i guess in the when you get to the clinical years um sorry the more clinical years as you mm. get later that's years like three five and six it becomes a little bit more um you have practical exams as well so you have like things called oskies and paces which test your uh, clinical ability as well as just your written stuff um like your knowledge ability um and they're, they're quite fun to be honest like you just get to practice taking blood on like doll's arms and what else do you do a bit of suturing which is like surgical yeah. stitch um really cool that. skills like how to put a catheter in never know how to do that before <laughs> yeah exactly um and you get you get loads of practice on that um but then yeah like it's just it's quite a quite a relaxed exam compared to the written isn't it really yeah um, so one of them is how does a typical week look like do you want, do you want... yeah you okay can. Right. i'll start with first year then and then maybe you could do the clinical mm -hmm. year so typical weeks are sort of for, for the first years now will be um, you'll you'll have a, a, a little bit, bit of a variety between like teaching sessions, which are going to be small group teaching sessions. You'll have some group work sessions, which is kind of like, it's a bit like PBL that's done at other universities, but it's kind of the next step on from that. So it's kind of like working together to, you know, like um, answer questions, solve problems, and then you, you learn as a group is the idea for some of those sessions. Then you also have a, some small group tutorials. So um, you've got uh, like you have like a tutor in the room and then you just have a couple of you in there just chatting about a particular topic just to go into it in a little bit more detail. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's quite it's quite varied, actually, this new course. Like, it's got loads of different teaching styles. It's, there's there's tons of different things that you can do. Like some of it is um, 
not even based in a lecture theatre. Some of it's based sort of out in the community. Like you go and visit some stuff, like you see some of the um, aspects of healthcare that like how poverty affects healthcare. You go and see it in person because um, obviously that's a really important part of medicine that you don't want to just be learning about in the lecture theatre. Um, so that sounds much more interesting than when we just looked at it, like in a, sitting in a lecture theatre when we studied it. Um, and I think in the early years, it's mostly it's sort of nine to five ish. Like you might finish a little bit earlier some days um, and you get Wednesday afternoons off, which is quite nice because you get Wednesday afternoons off um, to do sport. You get to do like any extracurricular activities that you want to do. Um, and that's pretty like that's pretty fun. And like you just get everyone, everyone in the whole med school gets the Wednesday afternoons off. So you can all do um, all do stuff together, uh, practice sport or yeah, go do a bit of music or whatever you're interested in. Chill yeah <laughs> um what's the clinical years like so the clinical clinical years vary very much depending on what type of specialty you're on so for example in third year you can either be on gp medicine or surgery and then you can either be in central london or a bit a little, little bit further out um in near west london so it's very much dependent on uh, where you're based but Again, like Ben said, you have Wednesday afternoons off. Um, if, say, for example, if you're on GP, you get to run your own clinic, you get to meet your own patients and write your own notes up, which is really cool. Um, if you're in surgery, you get to go and see like surgeries every day, which is awesome. Um, and you learn so much in clinical placements. It's so different to, you know, like Ben said, sitting in a lecture theatre, learning about how, you know, health inequalities can affect someone as a patient and then suddenly you're actually seeing it in real life and there is a real difference yeah um, i agree all of a sudden you're just out there doing stuff and it's like oh can you go and take blood from this patient or go and take a history from this person and it's like what like how do I do that? <laughs> yeah exactly but it's really cool like really hands-on experience from quite an early early stage yeah it's really really good um there's been a question about going abroad so like do, do you get to go abroad eg an elective period um, so yeah, everyone gets a, an elective period at the end of uh, med school and the way it works at Imperial, which I think works quite well, is you get, um, you do all your final exams, you have a little week, which is like practicing transition to F1, so your foundation year doctor, um, and you just learn about like some of the key skills that you might need as a foundation year doctor um, that aren't tested by examination or that you wouldn't have learned throughout your career. So just like how to write a, a discharge summary for people uh, when they're leaving hospital like really practical skills like that and then you get to go on this massive i shouldn't say holiday but it is essentially a holiday um you go on a holiday you, you do like a, a little amount of work no sorry a lot of work you're supposed to say a lot of work um in a hospital so that could be anywhere around the world like lots of people choose to go to um developed nations like people go to australia um south africa or um america and they they get an experience there but you can also choose to do the complete opposite and you can go to like um, developing countries, developing nations all across the world. So pe people have gone to um, African countries and gone and worked in like small rural clinics out there. Uh, people have also gone to work in Asia as well, which is, is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another thing about going abroad is, is cry. I mean, did you go abroad for your cry? Yeah, so I went to Nepal for my cry, which was really cool. Yeah, what was that like? So, I mean, as part of your second year, you get to choose a research module. So some people decide to stay in London and some people decide to go abroad. So I know, Ben, you went to, was it? Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. And I went to Nepal and it was just incredible. So we walked up through like the Himalaya mountains. We got to see like real rural villages. It was just such an experience. And the research you come out with afterwards as well, because... I think before that, you've only really done research at school, which is very different to research that you're going to do at uni. So I did my EPQ, and it was basically just a literature review to then go out and actually be meeting people and conducting your own studies and like your own data sets. It's, it's a really good experience. And then to go abroad as well was amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. The research, doing a research in a completely different country is just completely unlike something you've ever done. Like we did ours on transmission of HIV from mother to baby. And it's like, that's something that you never learn about. Like, well, you do learn about fifth year, but like, it's not a major part of the course. But it's just so interesting and in how massive a like, effect it has abroad, especially in like the poorer countries uh, it, it, across Africa. It's like it has a, it has a um, massive effect on their healthcare system. Um, so it's just really interesting to get that like insight into global health problems, I guess, isn't it? 
Yeah. And I would say there's definitely lots of opportunities if you're interested in going abroad and doing some like research over there. So even in fourth year, when you're intercalating, you get the opportunity to be part of um, an exchange program in Japan or there's just so many different opportunities. And the more people you get to meet at Imperial and network with, the more opportunities there are. Oh, so what is CRI? So CRI stands for Clinical Research and Innovation. And it's a second year module, which you do at the end of the year. And um, they teach you, so Imperial is really great. So they'll teach you everything about like epidemiology, how to conduct a data study. And then they kind of just release you so you can actually do your own research study. Um, and loads of people, so some of the people who stayed in London did research projects on sleep. They did it, someone did it with Dyson. Someone did it with like virtual reality technology. Um, so there's so many cool opportunities. There's a couple of questions that have come in about like what about Imperial, like what's unique, what differentiates you to the other London med schools. Mm. Uh, I mean, I answered some of those on the on the webinar. Like Tanya, do you have anything that you want to say on that? Um, then I'll, I can add some stuff. Um, I think for me, the reason why I chose Imperial was because you really get the kind of best of both worlds. So you have the research, you have your clinical experience in London, but also your able to mix with so many different people London's such a diverse community that the, not only the people that you're working with but the patients that you're working with as just from such a huge different like so many different backgrounds um and I think the best thing about Imperial is how we've been able to integrate like patient care with research and how important the two are together and how medicine is like an evidence-based practice and that the way that we'll make like so for example we're prescribing a certain drug for kidney failure you go back and you see you look at the research to why you're using this particular drug so it's really in depth about why you're doing certain things yeah yeah no i completely agree i think that kind of links into the the bsc stuff as well that we've said like i think there are massive advantages to doing a bsc like it's a great opportunity mm. uh, like tanya said like it's just a it's a chance to take a year out of doing clinical medicine and go and just do research or study something that you're genuinely interested in mm. like there's options that you can do here um and it's just a, a real chance to sort of you know get into the actual details like the real details about particular specialties that you that you might have a bit more interest in i think that's probably one of the other things that um has differentiated it for me because the fact that everyone is doing the um the bsc means that like you always stay as a cohort together so your whole year like goes through everything together you're all doing the the bsc like um icas at the same time the um sorry like the coursework at the same time and then you you all go into fifth year and you all become docs at the same time which is fantastic like because everyone has to do it and you have to do it at the same point i think that's quite another unique thing um because then yeah like the whole way through you're just celebrating together like your exams are always at the same time and then your celebrations are always at the, at the same time yeah. so I mean, you, you do get a chance to meet people from all all the other years don't you like friends are from completely different years like we're I mean we're from completely different well we're from a year apart um not for long but um we're from <laughs> a year apart so um like you just get to know people from everywhere through like all the extracurricular kind of stuff that you do um but it is nice to stick as a year group for certain things like big celebrations yeah um so yeah just to reiterate this call is being saved and it'll be saved onto um imperial medicine's uh, instagram page um, and it's admission to because people keep asking that as well it's about admission to uh, imperial for medicine so there's another question um is imperial very research intensive if you don't have an affinity for research should you exclude imperial from one of your choices um i don't know what you say ben but i wouldn't say they're particularly research heavy i think it's about as much as you like you can get involved as much as you want to do you agree yeah, I think that's the key thing. Like, I think for me, it's kind of the opportunities are there because they do do so much postgrad research. Like, the opportunities are there if you do want to take them, if you do want to get involved with um, like research, if you're particularly keen in that, or your or your BSc, you want to take that BSc and turn it into like a master's or a, a PhD. Like, there are the opportunities to do that. But no, like, it's not. It's no more research intensive for the undergrad course than any other university, really. Um, unless you want to take those opportunities, because then you can get involved. I mean, like. There's a society for research, which mm. you can get with as well um, to help you, you know, like put together bits of research. And they're always encouraging you to 
do research if you want to, but there's no like expectation to get any publications or right. there's no forcing yeah. uh, to do stuff that you don't want to do, like to do research if you if you don't fancy it. It's not your uh, cup of tea. Um, we got the dreaded question, by the way. It's what's, what, that? what's the best and worst thing about medicine, in your opinion? Oh, classic. You can go first. You're older than me, so. <laughs> um, the best thing, that's the easy part, is the, is the patience. Um, I think, yeah, the best part is just, especially when you do that, that first clinical year and you just get to spend so much time with patients, you get to chat about their life stories. Like, it's really weird. I mean, it sounds like such an interview cliche, um, but it's like hearing the kind of things that patients are willing to tell you, even though you're just a medical student, like they're just willing to tell you all about their private life, all about their um, like their conditions, their history, um, like their life history. And I think that's just really, it's a privileged position to be put in. Um, and it, it does, it does feel good. And then when you're able to kind of help these people, even if you're not fit to help them medically at this stage, like being able to help them feel better and to sort of calm them down, relax them, let them get things off their chest. I think that's a, it's just a unique thing. Um, and it's a unique thing about medicine as a career, really. I haven't ever heard of anything that's, that's quite as, um, that, that blends that personal aspect in with the doing the science sciencey aspect. I don't. Know, I think about a bad thing. Have you got a good, have you got a best thing or a worst thing? Um, I think I completely agree with you about like the clinical like the. I think one of the reasons why I went into medicine is that you actually are able to communicate with patients, but you're able to do the science as well. And just like you said, like I remember in first year, um, we did like a home visit and it was just incredible to hear about a patient's journey outside of the hospital because even in work experience you're just talking to patients but to actually understand their journey like through the NHS because unfortunately like when you are a doctor and when you are like um, a full-on like consultant or F2 or anything you don't get to spend that quality amount of time with a patient that you do when you're a medical student and I think that's one of the best things is that you can just sit there and you don't really have much else to do other than to devote your entire hour to them to just talk to them or spend as much time as you want with them um and they like you said they really open up and they really trust you and it's such a privilege to actually hold a position like that um i think the worst thing maybe i'm just thinking i suppose like sometimes it's all about like how you balance your time so i suppose when it comes to like exam season you might feel a bit stressed but as long as you you know, are able to have a good support network around you and are able to do like other hobbies. So have a work life balance, I think, which Imperial is just the place to do that. So we have, I think it's over like 200 different societies at Imperial. What 380. 380. Okay. So even more, um, 380 different societies at Imperial. And then along with that, we have medics societies as well. So it's completely around our timetable as medics um and there are just so many different like hobbies that you can get into if you've never played like a musical instrument before instrument before you can just get involved and they'll they'll really support you um so yeah that's all i can think of as the worst thing yeah i think mine's probably quite similar it's just about the kind of the breadth of knowledge that you mm -hmm. actually have to pick up along your time here like don't get me wrong it's definitely manageable and if you're like if you're thinking about applying for medicine like definitely go for it it's fantastic the positives definitely outweigh the benefits of doing a, of doing medicine but it's just there is a lot of breadth of knowledge that you need to know about um just until you get to like passing your finals and becoming a doctor uh, you need to know about like pretty much everybody's system uh how it works and how it goes wrong um and obviously that is oh and then how you treat it obviously and that's like a just that stuff takes up a massive amount of um a massive amount of time to learn um and it's, it's quite in detail and then you've got all the stuff on top that you get taught about um sort of like your communication skills and how how is best to interact with people what are the best kinds of questions to ask you know how can you get the most information out of people and come across as the friendly reassuring face that they need so i think it's it's the kind of the amount of things that you have to learn um from knowledge all the way to skills um and like I guess developing personality traits as well, like all of it, it just takes quite a lot of time. Um, but there, like you said, completely, like all of that is mitigated for the fact that you get to do this cool job that is helping people. And also while you're at university, like the work-life balance, if you want it to be, can be absolutely fantastic. 
and you can get away with um, pretty much like doing as much extracurricular stuff as you, as you want. So it's completely up to you. Yeah, really. Like it, it can be a bad thing, but so long as you don't get it, let it get on top of you and you keep stuff outside of medicine to keep getting involved with like sports or arts or, you know, like a bit of volunteering, um, that kind of stuff. It really helps balance out your, your life, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah. And um, someone's asked, what does the university have in place to support students with mental health struggles? Um, so just within like our student union as a medical school, um, we have a whole welfare team. And you've got um, under that, you've got like a campaigns vice chair and you've got a well-being representative vice chair. And so you, within medicine, you have a whole structure of support. So the well-being representatives are elected um, students from each year who then take back all of the, any issues or any problems back to faculty so they can deal directly with any problems that you're facing. But aside from just the student network, you also have FEO welfare, you have student support services, disability advisors. You have um, a huge abundance of resources that you can go to if you're like facing any um, struggles, not just with your mental health, but physical health. We have an on-site GP at Imperial. Um, you can have help with your finances, personal safety. Um, so there's a lot of support at Imperial for you. Yeah, um, and there's there's like um, an independent union advice service as well. And they have access to counsellors and all sorts of things if you need that as well. Um, and specifically for mental health, which is what you asked about, um, there's also like trained, lots of trained mental health. Um, first aiders or? Yeah, first aiders all across the campus. So like in, in all the different departments, there are lots of mental health first aiders um, and they tend to work within the welfare departments of the um, of the university. And they're, they're fantastic. Like they're a really good first port of call if there are any issues or if there are any problems that come up, just have someone to chat to. Um, so, yeah, I think if you, if, you, if you approach and if you're willing to approach people and get signposted to these resources, they are absolutely in abundance all over the place, all across the university and the union. Uh, there's, there's loads of places that you can come and get support all, of all types. Yeah. Um, there's a question about how many hours of independent study you expect to do in first year. I think... Um, there's no real expectation, is there? Like, they, they don't set a number. They don't be like, oh, like, you've got to do X amount per week. It's kind of like they tell you what you need to know, and then it's completely up to you how you go and learn that. So if you love going and, like, watching videos and taking your time learning stuff, then if that's your learning style, they're fine with it. Um, so long as, like, you do learn the skills and you do learn the knowledge eventually. But if you prefer to sort of, like, cram it all into, like, an hour's session and, like, intensely study that at, then that's completely fine. Um, I don't know. I've, I've never had any problems doing a variety of that kind of stuff over the years as like social things are busy or less busy. Like you can always find a way to fit stuff around it. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anything else? No, I, I think, yeah, you, you've answered that question. Yeah. Um, there's one question about like the culture at Imperial. Is it competitive or cooperative? That's a good question. Um, I would say that it's definitely cooperative. I mean, Imperial, like the School of Medicine itself, we have this huge note bank where older years are really willing to share their notes with you. Older years put on tutorials for you. Like there's a real sense of like community and family where older years just help you get through the, the course. Is there anything? Is there anything yeah, like I agree with you. Like obviously there's always going to be some level of competition at every university but I don't think it's like any worse at Imperial than it, than it would be anywhere else it's like people want to do the best they can and sometimes like if you let yourself get too caught up in that that's when you can start having issues but if you just know that at the end of the day like medicine isn't actually a degree that gets classified so you can't get like a first or a 2-1 or a 2-2 in medicine you literally get a pass or a fail yeah. it's like you're a doctor or you're not so once you kind of get around to that way of thinking and you realise, oh, actually, we are all in this together, um, I think then it becomes so much better. And like it's better for your mental health um, and it's just better for your overall experience because, yeah, you're completely right. Then you have access to all of the resources that the old years do. Um, and like the collaborative learning is, is a massive part of the community here, I think. Yeah, and I think even just how the course complements that. So your small group tutorials, you're working together 
throughout the whole course. So even when you're in a clinical placement environment, so at hospitals, you have a small teaching group. So you're never really alone. You've always got other people who can help you and give you some advice or help you learn like a specific disease. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, there's been one about an inter interviews. Like, do we, do we have to read research about a specific topic to talk about during the interview? Um, I don't know if there is a specific topic that you have to have to read about one of the things that they're kind of looking for is just a general interest in so they're looking for a general interest in medicine and a general interest in imperial as a whole like in oh i know about like how the course runs i know about the kind of stuff that i'm going to be doing here because that just shows that you're prepared for it and you're pre prepared for the realities of it really um yeah just stay up to date with the news i mean i'm sure you hear this for everywhere for all of the interviews everyone always says that um just stay up to date with medicine news like just at least know what's going on in the sector but if it's something you're keen about and if something if medicine and health is something that you're really like interested in anyway i don't think that's a major it's not going out of your way particularly just to read a few like articles on you know like the state of the uh, the state of health in the uk or like problems facing the nhs it's just sort of that's all going to be really really relevant to you in the future anyway so it's not particularly um going out of your way i don't know can you think of anything else that you might need to like research for the interview um i think like you said just have like a really realistic view of what medicine is um and like what the nhs is like um i think it does help maybe how if you wanted to research something they might ask you like are there any recent updates in the news that you've read about or any interesting research and if, if you know something that's really cool to kind of just say oh yeah i read this recently but i think as long as you have like I said, like a realistic expectation of what medicine life is like and that you can demonstrate that you know what it is to be a doctor. Um, I think that's the only thing really that you need to research. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think there's more independent study in comparison to the other universities? Oh, I missed one. We'll do this one and then we'll go back to it. Um, do you think there's any, like more independent study compared to other universities? Mm. And how many hours do you need? I think it's very much up to you. I know in the first two years um, of the new curriculum, there is there is quite a bit of independent study, but that's always guided learning as well because you have all of the online resource like resources. So you're never like truly independent. You'll always have like some resources that you can go to. I think when it comes to clinical learning, it is very much that you need to be able to do a bit on your own and kind of do it outside of the hospital hours as well. Um, but I, I think that's just all medical schools, really. I think you you have to have a, a degree of independent learning. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. It's, it's like it's teaching you to become a doctor as well, because when you're a doctor, there's no there's no one like breathing down your neck telling you, oh, you need to go and study on this particular condition. It's kind of like, oh, I've seen an interesting condition today. I'm going to go away and like read up about it or, you know, oh, I didn't know enough about that that, um, that I was expecting. So um, so just you go away and do your own stuff. And part of it does relate to what you're interested in, really, doesn't it? Because, like, you're never going to get 100% in the exams. So, like, focusing uh, on, like, learning really, really in detail things that you're particularly interested in and then just learning enough detail that you're a competent doctor in the other stuff. It's, like, again, it's it, the whole point of the independent bit is, like, it's up to you. Like, it's you've got autonomy over... That's one of the pillars of medical ethics. Look that up for the interview. Um, you've got autonomy over, um, over like, what you, what you want to do for yourself. Um, I think that's a really important part of being at university in general. But Imperial like gives you a lot of space for, for doing that. Um, there's a question about, are there any disadvantages of being in London? Um, uh, I think it's, I think it's great living in London. Like I live, I'm from Kent, so Kent's completely different to London. Um, I think it's so diverse. It's always busy. You get to meet so many amazing, interesting people, um, not just on your course, but outside of uni as well. Um, I think the only disadvantage for me is that it's expensive. Um, you just have to budget a lot. Uh, but yeah. I think that, that comes with part of being an adult. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's sad. Um, but I think like the expensive things are not like, because when you say London is London's expensive, like, Everyone just assumes, I know I thought this before coming to London, it's like everyone assumes that it means everything is expensive. Yeah. But like Tesco is the yeah. same price 
obviously it's the same price in London or like Liverpool. It's not going to make too much difference. Mm. The only things that are more expensive really are housing and um, like going out, like drinking alcohol or, or going out to places. I think those are the two main ways that it's more expensive. But there are loads of um, bursaries available and there's, there's loads of money and scholarships that are available for for things if you're having trouble like paying your rent or um if you just don't think you're going to be able to afford it then that's definitely um like there are tons of opportunities that are available there um to, to support you through that uh, oh and the, the only other thing i can think about of london disadvantages is you're not on a campus so although we do have an imperial campus it's like small compared to um like for example like durham or something like that like where they've got an entire bit that is no durham's a city one isn't it yeah what's the campus one um warwick is warwick the campus one (laughs) the campus universities that that there are they're like they can they have a whole area that's just for students and it's just students everywhere which does have some advantages like it might be quite nice to be in an area that's just students um and with your own shops and your own like Mm. things students but at the same time being in london like you get a much more variety uh of all the things nearby um it's not just student focused stuff you can go to whatever you want because it's all nearby um and although it isn't technically a campus i kind of feel like and like correct me if you if you disagree but i think that hammersmith around the hospital kind of feels like a campus because it's just like students yeah everyone lives within like five ten minutes of each other so like you can just walk to your mate's house or like give a cycle down to the river like it's it's really everyone lives really really close so it is essentially we've got a campus experience yeah. not just with other people living there as well yeah and it's great because we don't just have like south kensington we also have hammersmith so we can kind of like choose where we want to study like what library do we want to use or even st mary's library like there's so many different places that we can use yeah yeah no i i completely agree um i think should we let Muntar jump on now. So yeah. I'm going to find a way of leaving this. Um, and then you guys can answer some more questions if you're right with staying on. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. really know how to add him though. That's it. I'm going to pop out and then I think who can come back on on this account again. Okay. Um, but yeah, like nice to, nice to chat to you guys. Send us a message. Like send um, either one of the accounts a message if you've got any more questions. And anyone who's got the access will be, uh, be more than happy to help. All right, cool. Um, enjoy meeting Muntar, I guess. <laughs> Bye, Ben. Um, so there's a question about like accommodation and whether I live on campus. So like Ben said, um, we don't really have a campus. The main campus is in South Kensington. Um, and in first year, you can live in halls. So um, there are, I think, three different halls of accommodation in South Kensington. And then you have other halls of residence as well. So you have one, um, like a couple of like in White City or in, um, I can't remember the name, the letter begins with A, but yeah, in West London. Um, And then like Ben said, after, um, oh, I think that's someone trying to join. Let's just check. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so after um, your first year, um, you can either live at home if you're from London or you can also live in housing. Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. You look very, cool. very swish with your, with your headphones. Is my sound okay? Yeah. Perfect. Sorry. Yeah, okay, you go and carry on answering and then I'll introduce myself. I was just saying that, like, after first year, nearly everyone moves to Hammersmith, so it does feel like a campus. And it's really nice, because, like, even if you don't live with some of your friends, you can just walk to their houses afterwards, like, after a lecture or after clinical placements or something. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with that. And I think what you also find is, generally, people move out of the kind of South Kensington area a little bit. And the further out you go, the cheaper house prices often get. Um, okay, why don't I start off by introducing myself to all of you. So my name is Munti or Muntaha, and I'm the ICSM SU president for the incoming year. So I'll be taking over from Ben, who you saw earlier, not just taking over in terms of the Instagram, but more generally, I will be doing the role that Ben did this year. So yeah, keep your questions coming, and I'm looking forward to answering some of them. Um, so 
have you seen like any questions before that you thought Ben and I didn't answer very well or um I felt like you answered it amazingly to be honest um there was a couple of you asking about DMAT cutoff scores now those are available on the Imperial website but I did a quick little Google and just for those of you who were wondering for last year so the 2019 admissions process for home and EU candidates uh, the minimum cutoff score was a 3.5 in section one and section two, and the sum of those scores in both of these sections had to equal 8.6. And for section three, it was 2.5 C. Now, obviously, that changes year on year, uh, but that's a rough kind of guide for what it was last year. Um, yeah, and there were a couple of questions about the interview as well. So maybe we could talk a bit, little bit about what the interview was like. Yeah, sure. Um, cool. So, so for, for the last year, the interviews have changed from what used to be a panel. Now they're an MMI. Now, I can only really tell you a little bit about my kind of experience of the Imperial interviews. What I would say is the kind of aim of the interviews and the aim of the interviewers is really just to put you at ease. They really want to see who you are. They just want to kind of see, is this person that you are on paper in your personal statement? Is that who you actually are? Can you talk about your experiences at length? Do you have a realistic idea of what you're getting into with medicine? And I think that one thing I really found with my interviews is that the interviewers are genuinely really nice people and they're not trying to catch you out. All of the questions that they ask are all, you know, they're all just there to get the best out of you. And that's ultimately what they want to see. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think actually MMIs are really good because say one station doesn't go well, you can just move on and go to the next one and they have no idea how that other station went. So they're yeah. that. MMIs are literally like a game. Like I like literally I remember when I had my MMI stations, I was just bounding from like station to station. If you treat it like a game, it's actually really fun. <laughs> oh, so we've had a question about what is this student union about, which I feel like we should probably talk about like who we are yeah yeah so yeah so both me and tanya are of course on the student union i guess the main kind of summary for the su is we're just here to make your time at imperial as fun as and enjoyable as possible so there's 21 of us in total including myself and tanya um, and we basically are there to represent students we're here to make sure you're supported academically from a welfare point of view we're here to support all of your clubs and societies. We're here to basically run events, make sure that you're capable socially. And yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it just comes down to making sure you're well supported, making sure that you're happy, making sure that you're having as enjoyable a time as possible. Yeah, pretty much nailed it. <laughs> um, so something about like iPads. So what resources did you use to make notes and revise? Did you use a laptop, iPad or textbooks? Um, so I think it's very much a mixture of the three. So you get iPads when you come to Imperial, which is really useful for when you have lectures or like small tutorials. Also really handy when you go onto like the hospital wards. So you're not carrying around like a laptop or you're not using your phone. You can just use your iPad if you want to make a note. Um, I think when it comes to like the actual course and like the course content, it's probably good to use like the online textbooks as well as like the textbooks from the library as well, especially anatomy textbooks. Very, very helpful. Um, do you yeah, have for, for me personally, I've actually never used a textbook at all from first year up until now. But different people go about it in different ways. What I used was this thing called Note Bank, where VSU basically mm -hmm. collates notes from older years, puts it into like one big drive. And I found that really helpful. That and the lecture slides were like just sufficient for That's me personally. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You also, the real big perk of Imperial, you get a free iPad when you join. So if you're not already persuaded, that might just tip it for you. Um, what are the most important aspects of the application, the academic grades, the BMAP personal statement or interview? That's a difficult one. I, from my understanding, it's they kind of take everything into account. So they look at your 
predicted grades, they look at your, obviously your BMAT scores and they have a cutoff of the BMAT scores. They look at your work experience, your personal statement, your reference, and they basically form this kind of holistic view of yourself as a candidate. And then based on that, they'll invite you for interviews. And after that, then depending on how you perform at interviews will determine whether or not you get an offer. Um, but definitely make sure to check out the admissions website as well. That will go into more detail. Yeah. Um, now there's a question about uh, what's the best and worst thing about Imperial? It's not about medicine, but about Imperial. That's a difficult one. What do you think? Um, I think, again, the best thing for me is like the integratedness of like so how you not only just learn about the science but you're able to meet patients literally from first year I think that's one of the best things and also it's not just one type of learning style so it's not just lectures all the time nine to five you have small group tutorials you'll have lectures you'll have um like seminars like you have so many different ways of learning um I'm not, I'll think about a worse thing. <laughs> I think that, that, that itself says a lot. We can't think of the worst thing about Imperial. That's how much we, that's how much we love it. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one, the worst thing. I mean, I, for me personally, the best thing for me is perhaps one of the not so good things for other people. And that's just being in London. And I know that you guys touched on it already about all the perks of being in London. It's such a vibrant student city. There's always so much going on. And for me, I grew up in an area which was a lot more rural. There's basically nothing going. It's just a really dead area. So when I came to London, I was like, yeah, this is fantastic. Like, I can get to anywhere, place to place. Like, there's just so much freedom. I knew that for some people who maybe have grown up in London and are used to it, perhaps you may like something a little bit more rural, I guess. But for the most part, for me personally, that is the best thing about Imperial, just being in London. There's just so much stuff to do. There's always something going on. And I think another thing that's great about London is um, all the London medical schools have a very like close connection and we all communicate with each other. So there's something called the United Hospitals Group and it's where like UCL, Barts, King's, Imperial, St George's, we all come together and we all like talk about what go works well for our unis, what doesn't, what can we can improve on. We run events together. So there's a lot of like, connection so you're never in a in a city like london you're never going to find yourself alone yeah um, opinion on the nhs it's fantastic <laughs> amazing uh what other questions have we got have you got any tips for writing personal statements have you guys covered that yet no we haven't mm. for me i i would say when i was writing my personal statement if there's one thing i was always told to really push it's not just listing out your experience. Don't just say, I did this, I did that. What they're really looking for is insight. What did you learn from your experiences? How has that influenced your decision to apply for medicine? How has that made your kind of insight into medicine as a career more realistic? So just trying to go that extra bit further. Don't just say, I did this, I did that. But more about what did you learn? What did you get out of it? Yeah, and... Um in medicine they're really big on reflection so just talk about reflecting on the experiences that you've had and like Minty said what you've learned from them it's very much lit like it's not about what you've done it's about what you can take away from it and what skills you've now developed um that's the biggest tip I think for the personal statement mm. um I think there's some questions about like work-life balance and socializing like how would you describe the work-life balance I think at Imperial, that's, I think, one of the things which really makes Imperial a little bit more unique, because as an academic institute, we're really top notch, one of the like top 10 in the UK or whatever we are. There's like all of the clinicians and the lecturers are really some of the best in their fields. Academically, it's so, so strong. But at the same time, that's not at an expense to the student experience. And if there's one thing I've found is that actually it's really encouraged for you to have a good work-life balance. I mean, we've got Wednesday afternoons off where it's encouraged for you to take part in clubs and societies. There's over 60 clubs and societies dedicated just for us as medical students, over 375 across the entirety of Imperial. And like I said earlier, there's always something going on in London. So 
But I think that that's one thing which really makes Imperial unique. It's just so well balanced. Some universities may be a little bit more focused on the academic side, perhaps at the expense of the student experience. And likewise, there's some universities out there who are really strong socially, but maybe lack in other areas. But I feel like Imperial is just so well balanced between the two. Yeah, and I think you have, you actually end up having a good, really good like relationship between the faculty and the students. So in Freshers Fortnight, um, which is something that the student union put on for you, um, there's like faculty pub quizzes where you can go and you'll be doing a pub quiz with like one of your like future lecturers and you're like, this is so crazy. He's sitting right next to me. Um, so you just end up having a really good relationship, not only with the students, but with the staff as well. Yeah, absolutely. There was one question a while back which I saw and someone asked about the confidence side of things. They're kind of thinking of applying to medicine, but they're a little bit, they lack a little bit of confidence. They're not really sure about um, being thrown into like a clinical situation, being able to engage in dialogue with patients. And I would say that it's just one thing I would say is that I think everyone is in the same boat and it's obviously is a little bit daunting to kind of go in and to like start speaking to patients but actually the way in which you do that you're kind of eased into it they don't just get you in and like chuck you in front of patients and expect you to like start examining and taking blood and all of that but actually a lot of the work you do in early years is with simulated patients so just with actors um, and you get a lot of teaching on the kind of clinical communication side of things of how do you actually like communicate and interact with patients and over the years they just slowly build it up a little bit more and more until like you go into like a ward and you're more than happy more than comfortable to start like taking bloods from patients speaking taking histories and all of the rest of it but it is a transition it's not like you're just thrown in straight away into like theatres and expected to kind of get really hands-on and stuck in yeah absolutely um there's a question about are there any false imperial stereotypes Mm. what do you think i think there probably are <laughs> um i think like i remember when i first got into imperial they were like oh so are they all nerds i was like wow okay so are you calling me a nerd um i think like at imperial we're very very fortunate that we're from a community where you meet so many amazing intelligent people but at the same time the way how like imperial chooses their medical students is that they look at the person as a whole. So you'll find that the person you're sitting next to in the lecture theatre is also a person who's like grade eight at violin and you're just like, oh wow, okay, that's really cool. Um, so I think that, you know, I think it's amazing how Imperial choose who can come to Imperial um, to study medicine. And that I think, you know, people just thinking, oh, Imperial medics, they only care about work. They don't really do anything else. Yeah, no, no, absolutely agree. And I think another stereotype is also about the kind of gender balance that we have at Imperial. And a lot of people think it's like really male dominated. And from my experience, I really don't think it is, or at least in medicine, it's really not. I would say it's actually really close to 50-50. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Will an applicant have an upper hand in the admissions process if they study in an Indian curriculum rather than IB or GCSEs? Um, again, check the website. Uh, make sure to email the admissions team at feo-admissions-interviews at imperial.ac.uk. But yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. Um, and then are lecturers and academic staff easily approachable if you have any academic queries? absolutely 100 percent. like at the end of any like tutorial or lecture like lecture you could just go down and ask them a question or you can even find their email address and just email them a question um yeah i think they're really approachable and you also have academic reps so alongside the well-being reps that you get with each year you have three academic reps so you say for example you're having an issue with a part of the course you can just feed it back to the students who will then go to faculty and the staff and just say actually there's a part of the course which your students aren't happy with yeah um so how does imperial compare to ucl and cambridge so it's a little bit difficult i think for us to be able to comment on other universities because we obviously haven't done that course itself we don't have first-hand experience but we speak a little bit earlier about what makes imperial unique and the idea of just having a really strong academia with a really strong social life and just having that balance and i think that's 
what makes Imperial specifically unique, as well as some of the other things that you guys already spoke about with like the integrated BSC, the clinical research and innovation module, the early clinical exposure, and some of the other points within the curriculum as well. Um, there's a question about um, what advice would you give to a year 12 student hoping to study medicine? Oh, that's a deep one. Um, yeah. I would say that my biggest advice would be to make sure that you do go on work experience and you have as clear an idea as possible as to what it is you're getting into. Um, because once you're in medicine, it is a long journey. Um, it's obviously a six year course. It's like a you, you need to make sure beforehand that it is definitely what you want to do and making sure you go to open days, you speak to medical students. And obviously this is a great opportunity to do just that. Um, I think that's really important. Just try and make sure you have a clear insight as possible into what you're getting into. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, like you said about just understanding really like what medicine is at a young age so that you, you already kind of, you know what the expectations are of you once you get into medicine. And also I would say just to take it easy and to not get so stressed. I think as a year 12, I put a lot of like pressure on myself thinking, I have to do this, I have to do that. And like the year 12 summer where you do your UCAT and your BMAT can get really intense. So I would just take it easy and just remember not to put so much pressure on yourself. That was so me as well. Like I just remember stressing out so much. I was like spending my entire summer like on like Medify or whatever, just doing U UCAT questions after UCAT questions, just really caught up in everything. But yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, How so many, oh yeah, yeah. no problem. No, no, it's yeah. what family societies can you join. So as part of, so as a medic, you're part of ICSM SU, which, which is the Imperial College School of Medicine Student Union. It's basically a student union dedicated just for medicine and uh, medical bioscience students. And as part of that, there's 60 clubs and societies dedicated just for medical students. They generally range from some of the more academic and specialty focused societies and volunteering societies as well as sports clubs for just about any sport you can think of, and also some arts clubs as well. But as a medical student, you're also part of the wider Imperial College Union, which is something that all Imperial students, regardless of medicine or non-medicine, are a part of. And there's over 375, basically, in total. You can go to any club, club or society, whether it's medicine-specific or non-medicine-specific. And so I think in answer to that, to that question, you can join as many societies as you want to. I think and I, if it doesn't, that, yeah, no. I was just like signed up to too many, like on your mail list, you have like 50 pe like, people like messaging you and you're like, oh my gosh, wow, so many different clubs. Um, I still yeah. get them now for like random societies. I'll probably never join, but I may be signed up to it for fresh as fair. There's like a juggling society and like loads yeah. of really random ones. <laughs> And if one doesn't exist, then you can always set up your own if you really want to as well. Absolutely. Um, so there's something about what if you really like medicine, but won't, don't want to learn about so many diseases? M medical biosciences, that might be an option. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't really know how else. I think a big part of medicine is the clinical side of things. So there is a lot of diseases out there but you will have to learn them um but actually the way in which they're taught as well is that it's just broken down into kind of the main diseases which you become really familiar with from the early years and then the same diseases keep on coming back up again and again and again and so really by the time you get to like fourth fifth year you've already been taught some diseases like six seven times already so it's actually not i know it can seem a bit daunting but it's not as difficult as it sounds yeah and also i think it's not just like the science behind the disease but you also learn about like the presentations that a patient will come in with how that disease will affect the patient so there's a real like patient side as well as the science side to the diseases yeah um i think i mean i can't seem to find any like any of the different ones yeah. So the interview is just an MMI. There's no general interviews and no panel interviews. Yeah, I think. What would you What would you recommend as a backup fifth course? Um, personally, I just did biomedical sciences. Um, 
but yeah i yeah that that was just a kind of fifth choice i put down just for the sake of it more than anything yeah same and yeah so if you were looking to do the virtual open day um you can contact admissions again um to ask about access to it yeah do they employ actors in the mmi um I'm not sure specifically. I think it's either going to be an actor or potentially a student, but it may it may change year on year. Um, so the research society, what is that all about? So I think that's just more about the research opportunities that you can get involved in in London. Um, and like if you've done some research, you can maybe like uh, apply to like present any posters you want or anything. Um, and yeah, so I think. For the actors, actually, I don't think they do have actors in the medical school interviews. I think they're all just like students volunteering. Um, uh, is the staff and student body at Imperial diverse and do you feel it is inclusive? Absolutely. I don't, I mean, do you want to answer this question? I think, I think that especially at Imperial, we have so many international, definitely from a student point of view, there's so many international students, there's people from all sorts of backgrounds who come to Imperial. And so I just think that, yeah, it is really, really diverse. Even the staff themselves are very diverse, all from very different backgrounds. And yeah, I definitely feel it's quite inclusive. And should I start preparing for BMAT or ILETS during the summer of year 11 or year 12? I would say year 12, I'm not yeah. sure. But yeah, you don't need to start preparing from year 11. Yeah, and don't worry. Paul can always give you some advice or there's so many different like societies um, that Imperial run as well. So we have a couple of outreach societies um, which go and you can learn about the medical school process. You can learn about the different admissions exams um, and they'll, they'll offer help as well. Yeah, cool. Any, any other questions from anyone? If not, we're just about to hit four o'clock. Um, so thank you so much to everyone for submitting all of your questions, for watching along, all of your comments. If we weren't able to answer any of your questions, then make sure to, again, drop admissions an email. So go to feo-admissions-interviews at imperial.ac.uk, and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. But yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching. And also you can either message this account or the ICSMSU account if you've got any further questions that you want to ask the students. Cool. Good luck with everyone applying and yeah, all the best. <laughs> See you. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye.